What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season two, episode four. I don't know why I thought we was on episode three, y'all. It's like these episodes are going by fast. We've been in it for four weeks. But um, let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. I did it a bit of the old school way. You know, I don't take notes anymore because I just feel like it takes up a lot of my time. But I wanted to gauge if the episode was going to be good or not. Or, you know, worth talking extensively about. So, I watched half of the episode and I took notes for it. And then I stopped. I was supposed to film this last night. But I got tired after I clocked out of work and ate and all of that. So, instead I had a Lady Gaga concert on my IG story. Follow me on Instagram at simply underscore Sakina. It will be in the description box and y'all can see my live concert. I'd like to give karaoke... Uh, <laughs> I like to do karaoke with Kina from time to time. So y'all might catch that on my story. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into this episode. It picks up where it left off last week with Meredith storming off because she don't want to hear Jen's lies. Now here is Lisa trying to beg Meredith to go back and hear Jen out and let her explain. Explain what? Meredith already heard her tell lies. She does not want to take accountability for what she said, retweeted, or you know, whatever the case on Twitter in regards to Brooks. Like, Meredith ain't got time to hear none of them lies. So, <laughs> Meredith is feeling like in her confessional, Lisa is going so hard for Jen just to make her life easier. So, she won't have to pick sides between Meredith and Jen. And she's right on the money with that. Now, on the other side, there's Jen and the blondes. And Whitney is telling Jen, like, girl... You've done this to me. You've done this to Heather. You've done this to Mary. Now you're doing it to Brooks. And when she mentioned Brooks, Jen got upset and was like, basically, she ain't accepting that because she ain't never did nothing to Brooks. Girl, I'm not believing you when you say that you do not run your Twitter. That's a whole lot of bull. We already know how you get down. You like to talk your ish on Twitter. I didn't hear you saying that last season. At the reunion, I didn't hear you saying that you didn't run your Twitter. Now, all of a sudden, season two comes around and you're saying that you don't run your Twitter. I think that's a whole lot of BS, okay? And you just don't want to be held accountable for talking shit about Brooks. So, she gets mad at the blondes because they're letting her know, like, yeah, you do need to apologize. You need to do this and that. She mad because they ain't taking her side and she storms off. And at this point, she ready to go home. Since you can't get mad because you got patterns out here and that you need to fess up to what you done did, then did, then did. <laughs> so as she's storming off, she's trying to go and Lisa's trying to stop her. And then she tells Jen that Brooks never came out and she don't want to hear none of that because she feels like she has done no wrong when it comes down to Brooks. And then she tells Lisa, if you want to tell me to apologize, you need to go apologize to the blondes because even you think that you've done nothing wrong to them. So the blondes overhear this and they was like, yes, Jen Shaw, let her know. Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now they just sitting back because they had to go say, what's she saying? Um, I'm not walking on that ice. I lied about my weight. <laughs> Y'all know I love her. She really be saying the funniest shit. So Lisa is still begging and pleading that Jen go and talk to Meredith. And Jen is like, I was trying to defend my vagina and my kids. Girl, what has Meredith or Brooke said that has affected your children? If anything, you're the one that is messing your children up, girl. Remember how you was acting at Sharif's birthday party? And your son, what's his name, Omar, was in the car trying to tell you to calm down. And you was like, no, fuck that. I'm pretty sure them kids have experienced the fuckery that you've brought around the family. Well, shit, they probably trying to disown your ass now because you done really. You over here stealing money from the elderly. That's not funny, but I'm just saying, like, they probably more ashamed of you now more than ever. After you done showed your ass all season one and you want to talk about some They've affected your children. No, you've affected your children. Girl, you need to wake up. You're crazy as hell. So as she's going on this rant, she's doing a lot of hand movements and she's upset and her tennis bracelet falls off. And Lisa picks it up to hand it to her and she was like, fuck that. And she threw it across the way somewhere in the snow. Girl, you're dumb and irrational. And Lisa is saying in her confessional that she's patient 
but she draws the line when you throw diamonds. But then you throw Rolex out the window because you was mad at your husband. Then you say you did that last season. Girl, and yes, your patience with Jen and her telling you to shut the fuck up. Girl, who was you talking to? I don't give a damn how mad you are. Do not give a side yourself, bitch, because I will cuss your ass out and make your ass... Mm -mm. I will hurt Jen's feelings. Like, seriously, I don't understand it. So, Lisa goes and tries to find the bracelet. The rest of the girls rally around Meredith, who was still there. Ma'am, you didn't walk all across the way to, to storm off. And you got to the middle point and stopped. Only for you to overhear Jen continuously say that she didn't do these things. Girl, why you ain't left? It had to be production that's making her stay because I don't understand why she was still there. So all the rest of the girls rally around Meredith and she was just basically saying that, you know, she don't want to hear it. Uh, Jen's partner of crime, he goes and stops uh, Jen and was telling her, you know, basically, you need to try to make this work. Y'all need to be able to coexist. You don't necessarily have to apologize. Of course, she giving him the same energy that she was giving Lisa. And she finally decided to go over and apologize to Meredith. I wouldn't believe her not one bit. Girl, fuck you. You got a pattern of apologizing and then doing some fuck shit. So I would take that with a grain of salt, girl. Get the fuck out of my face, Jen, with that dumbass crown hat on. I think Giselle had the same kind of hat on. At one of them points of uh one of them seasons in Potomac. Like, girl, get the fuck out of here with that cheap ass hat. Now, Wendy is trying to figure out why Lisa is trying to cape so hard for Jen. She don't understand it. Lisa thinks that she's being reasonable and logical in the situation. But it's just like, girl, whatever. Jen wants to apologize to Brooks and I want to let her come close to my child. All this shit is weird. And like I said, I feel like Jen is going to do this shit again. So it's no point of apologizing. We move on to this next scene with Lisa leaking up with two of her friends. We meet Angie. Angie is one of her friends that they go back from, what, the age of 16, 17 or whatever. Why are we sitting here watching these white people profess their love to fast food and KFC coleslaw. Angie's throwing a charity event for the LGBTQIA community. They have a daughter that is trans and they are going to have a charity event. And um, who is going to be there? Whitney is going to be there. Come to find out Angie and Whitney are newfound cousins. And Lisa is salty about it and she's showing her jealous side. Mary and her son. They have this weird, awkward standoff where she's like, okay, you came to get some water from the refrigerator, but you're not going to talk to me. Hello, talk to me. And they had this like very silent stare down. And then she got saved by the bell because Meredith came over. Her face is red as hell because she just got a vampire facial. Now, I've heard of a vampire facial before, but I did not know the extent of what it is. So they draw your blood. Spinning around in one of those little thingies. I don't know if it's a stabilizer, whatever it is. Then they put the blood back on your face with a micro needle or whatever, like the little rolly thing, I think. That's what that is. What is that? I was with Mary. So you mean to tell me you doing all of this to put DNA back on your face? It's giving weird. Like, girl, and she was saying it was, yeah, I just came from a vampire facial. Yeah, and there's black people looking at you like, girl, what the fuck is going on? So they both are going to the charity event that Angie is hosting. And this is the first time that Mary is going to see Jen since the reunion. She said, you know, she thought everything was cool. They squashed the beef. Jen apologized at the reunion. And then tweets got to resurfacing about how it started, how it ended with her and her grandpa husband. Honey, baby, like we said, Jen has a pattern. No one can believe her. Moving on to the next scene, we see that Whitney and her pioneer cousin have lunch. Baby, they start talking about their great, 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 great grandpa. Okay. I mean, yeah, y'all cousins. 
And it's okay for them to, you know, connect and continue as family. I don't see anything wrong with it. But Angie tells Lisa, uh, I mean, Angie tells Whitney that Lisa does not like it. And she really doesn't even want her to be cool with Whitney. And I think that's very weird that she's going hard for Angie not to befriend Whitney as if their beef is so detrimental. Like, they done been through some shit to where Lisa is just like, no, like, she's wronged me. You cannot be friends with her. How dare you? How you gonna try to put stipulations on who she's cool with, but yet you won't allow Meredith the grace to not fuck with Jen. You want her to be Jen's friend so bad after Jen actually was talking shit about her son. Lisa, you're weird. I don't get her. She's very weird. And now this is the point where my notes have ended and I just watch and react. I did not get halfway through this episode like I thought I did. But yeah, back to Lisa. Girl, you're crazy for real. The fact that you don't want Angie to acknowledge Whitney as her cousin and then you go as far as canceling or having something to do with the catering company canceling for Angie's event. This is a close friend of Lisa's. And Angie gets a text message from the catering company saying, I don't think that this is the event for us. We're actually just going to host some things within the restaurant. And Lisa has something to do with it. I can't remember what the wording was exactly. But Whitney is like, yeah, based on my experience with Lisa, this has her name written all over it. And it happened within a matter of five hours. So Angie said, yeah, me and Whitney are cool. You know, we're friends. And then five Hours after that, the catering company is now canceling. And that catering company is very close with Lisa, close friends, and they work with her all the time. That is like some really green-eyed envy shit. Like, it's, that's weird. And I would not put it past her. And at this point, I am questioning how sweet she is. I shouldn't even question that. At this point, yeah, I take back what I said about Lisa. Like, girl, you're a mean girl. So everybody is getting ready for this charity event and every time Jen comes on the scene, she says something subliminal. Like, yeah, I, I own the casino. I'm here to collect. Yeah, you was collecting the money from the elderly girl. It's from you saying, I haven't went to jail yet. I'm collecting money. Lisa, I need all your information so I can steal your identity. Like, girl, you always putting yourself in these positions that is lining you right up to go to jail. Now, everybody is showing up to this party, and they look good for the most part. Um, I think out of everybody, my favorite look was Jenny's. I loved her hair. She looked really pretty. Um, Whitney, I hated that flip. Your, your bang was flipped. Girl, no, ma'am. I was not feeling that. Um, yeah, I wasn't too fond of her jumpsuit either. Um, I couldn't see Heather's outfit, and I really couldn't see Jen's outfit like that because they had on jackets and stuff. But when Jen got there, Mary was like, oh, shit, there she is. So it's Jenny, Mary, and Whitney. <laughs> They're trying to climb over this lady's banister to avoid running into Jen. First of all, why y'all doing that at somebody's house? Second of all, it's not that serious. Y'all really out here acting like y'all trying to survive Jen Shaw. Like, oh my gosh. Okay. So Whitney goes over the banister. And by the time she do all of that, the area that they needed to walk through had cleared up because Jen and them had moved. Girl, y'all just extra as hell. Y'all really out here surviving Jen Shaw. So Lisa gets there. I'm trying to figure out if I missed anything. Did I miss anything? Oh, no. Uh, uh, Jen was explaining in her confessional that this is basically like a sin in the Mormon community. They down the street from the, whatever, Mormon University, and they're breaking all kinds of words of wisdom because they got craps, roulette, alcohol, all these simple things that are not acceptable in the Mormon community. And the producers is asking her, what is the words of wisdom or whatever it is? And she was like, thou shalt not drink alcohol. Thou shalt not do this, that, uh, watch porn. All these things that you ain't supposed to be doing, but yet they're having this. And I feel like Angie said something about her religion. I don't know if she's like super into Mormonism. But we know that she comes from, you know, a Mormon pioneer. 
child. Let them have their pioneers, child, and we'll have our ancestors. But uh, yeah, y'all already know how we feel about white people saying ancestors. I don't like white people saying ancestors, and I don't feel right when I hear them say queen. Like, ugh. That. Like, I know the Queen of England and, you know, shit like that. But when they be like, yes, Queen, I be like, bitch, yes, Queen, what? Say what? Don't be appropriating, bitch. <laughs> now that I have my earrings back on, Lisa arrives to the party and she greets Jenny and Jenny is with Whitney. So she pulled the season one. Remember when she had curved Heather, at one of the events that they was having, she did the same thing to Whitney Rose. She said, hey to Jenny. We know that's her homegirl. So it would be more natural to greet her first. But she was like, damn, they're going to ignore Whitney. But they made eye contact. And Whitney was about to say something that she was saying to Lisa's husband. But then Lisa whips around as if she didn't even hear her talking. Like, girl, you're rude as hell. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. She is not a nice girl. I told y'all, I remember I was going up for her the other day, trying to defend her, saying that I do feel like she has a nice side to her. Girl, no, you're mean-spirited and mean-spirited for no reason because she even said, after she ignored her, she goes to tell somebody, oh, the worst thing you could do is have an event with no food. She did that shit. In the words of Canaan from Power, she did that shit. Mm-hmm. Because why are you pointing out the food when you already know you have some type of connection to the caterer? Girl, you're shady as fuck and flaw. Now, everybody is mingling. And Seth, he goes and tells Heather that her personality is so distracting that he didn't notice her breast. Why are you commenting on that, sir? Huh? I don't need you to look at my breast, married man. Back up, married man to my friend. Get back. Why are you saying that? Like, I was like, um, and I'm the only one who was weirded out by that. Like, uh-uh, that is, mm, that's not appropriate, sir. I'm gonna need you to not do that. And I'm sick of him in Meredith. Like, I don't know if it's because Meredith is dry in everything that she says, but I'm not convinced that she's having a good time with her husband. Like, them pointing out how many times they've had sex and stuff like that is just like, uh, we don't care and I'm not really convinced that y'all really enjoying each other's company because Meredith always seems dry and that she's faking it that could just be her personality I think she does have a dry personality but so much so that she handed it down to her son honey but yeah I'm just like uh, I'm not too convinced that you really like this man girl but um they they get down to the reason why they're there for the charity event Angie has a charity called In In Circle, and it's a place for you know transgender people in the community. Baby, one of the guys dropped a million dollars. I said, baby, like it wasn't nothing. I'm jealous. Black people, let's get this money, honey, so we can do charity events and drop the money and not only be surrounded by ball players and rappers and people in the music industry. Like, nah, let's let's get the tech world. Let's get other places where you can be millionaires, okay? Let's, let's get in circles like that. Now, Angie did say that she's not a part of the Mormon community. Her her husband decided to go against it because they don't accept her son. Now, I want to give y'all a little crash course or a good explanation on how to address a transgender person because one of my friends was confused by this the other day and I had to explain it to him. Okay, so a transgender woman is a man that transitioned to a woman, Okay. So you address her as her she, okay? So you always think about what the title is. Transgender woman is a man that has transitioned to a woman, she and her. A, trans a transgender man is a man is a woman that has transitioned to a man. So his pronouns is him, he. Got it? So think about what's being said in the title i'm a transgendered woman meaning that i'm a man that has transitioned to a woman i am a transgendered man i am a woman that has transitioned to a man okay there y'all go mary and jen jen is suggesting that they get the kids and the husbands together to have a grill off and mary was like uh-uh I really don't think that you really care for me because we did make up, but then a week later you was bashing me. 
Of course, Jen doesn't know what she's talking about. You know, she feels like they're in a good place. Now, Mary said that she's going to open the door to accept Jen, but she got a screen there, okay? An electric screen, okay? Because the trust has been burned. I said, listen, girl, y'all keep giving her second chances and I ain't asking y'all to burn, uh, not burn. I'm not asking y'all to ice her out, but she's just too flip-floppy. Like, I would literally just, trust her as far as an arm's reach or whatever the people say like i just uh uh i mm -mm, i would really tread really lightly we will be friends on a surface basis okay we only doing this for this show but really i'm not having you over at my house i don't even want to have any type of communication once the cameras go down like that's the relationship i would have to have with jen shaw i'm not getting the 70s vibe from this party now apparently it's supposed to be 70s themed y'all know 70s era that's my favorite i i love the 70s i love the blouses the bell bottoms like the froze i think i would have thrived in the 70s i love 70s music nonetheless um angie goes and pulls lisa to the side and she wants to tell her about this whole catering situation. Now, remember, I couldn't figure out what was going on in the beginning. It was Lisa's assistant that had made the call. So basically, Angie is like, look, I'm feeling like you got something to do with it. Everybody around me feel like you got something to do with it. Maybe you, you know, threaten the people and they had to pull out. And she's like, I'm confused. I'm so confused. Like, wait a minute. This is weird. So, um, I mean, I just feel like she basically don't have anything to do with it. And then she goes and throws Whitney out there. You know, you're friends with Whitney and you've known what she's done to me. What does that have to... I'm mentioning the catering. And then you go and say something about Whitney. That is your main thing. Yeah. Now that you're mentioning her, I am feeling like this is going back around to the whole canceling of the caterer because they were on board up until I told you that Whitney was coming and we was cool. And now all of a sudden, they're saying that your assistant called and now they have to pull out of my event. Angie said that she's very territorial and she thinks that Lisa is capable of getting in between her event. Yeah, I think so too because why are you bringing that up? Whitney has done nothing to you that will cause you any harm. And it's funny that you could be friends with both Meredith and Jen, but Angie can't be friends with you and Whitney. It definitely is a control thing. And I'm glad that Angie is seeing that. Sad to say, you're going to have to get on a show like this and then it ruins your friendship. But you can't tell me that Lisa was like, wasn't like this off camera when y'all was back in uh, the years of y'all being 16, 17. Like, this girl was crazy. And now all of a sudden she's going to get married. But I'm like, go get married for what? This thing got real weird because she went to go get married and Jen. And then Lisa asked, once they got in the room together with Angie, Lisa asked Meredith. Um, she starts explaining like, you know, is, is Jen affecting our relationship? And then Angie is like, yeah, I mean, I, I did want to know if Lisa's relationship with Jen affecting y'all's relationship in any kind of way. Meredith said no. Yes, it is. Y'all not really... I feel like it may not be like something so obvious, but I feel like their communication may have slowed down a little bit or... Um, Meredith is definitely giving Lisa the side eye, so she wasn't being truthful in what she said, but whatever. So, I'm with Jen. Why are we here? What is this argument about? And it's definitely giving that Lisa is deflecting because never once did, did Angie say that Jen was affecting their relationship in that conversation. She just made a point to say that you could be friends with the both of them, but I can't be friends with you and Whitney. That's all she was getting at. So, Lisa, why are you bringing Jen and Meredith into this? Because this don't have anything to do with them. Now, Lisa is talking about, I, I'm just so upset right now. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. You're upset, but you ain't crying. So, girl, scram. Whitney comes in, and Angie is like, yeah, I wanted to address this with you because... 
tell me what you think when you will see this. So then she says, why would you show Whitney, somebody who doesn't like me, the text messages? This is... <laughs> All of them don't need to be in the room. Like, why Why is y'all here for real? Lisa the guy called red-handed. Whitney laid it all out. You told Angie, don't follow me on social media. You told her, don't acknowledge me as a cousin. And Lisa's like, what happened to confidence? Why did you tell her that? Her and Heather were out for me. And you wanted to befriend these, what'd she say? This thing or something she said offensive to Wendy. Wendy, child. Whitney. Wrong show. So then <laughs> Whitney says in her confessional that she has a PhD in Lisa's behavior. When she walks out, she's guilty. She cries. She doesn't want to deal with it. Like, girl, she was doing all that fake crying and it was sending me. Like, girl, you are nobody's victim. And I need people to stop trying to make people stay in rooms when they don't want to stay there anymore. Like, all that grabbing on them and, like, get off of me. Like, me watching Meredith and Jane grab on Lisa was really pissing me off. If she wants to leave, let her leave. Because y'all holding on and doing all that grabbing, that's not going to make the situation better. Just let them leave. She want to go home? Let her go home with her weird territorial ass. Like, I get it. I have ter territorial ways too, but not to the point where I'm going to sabotage my friend's event and I'm going to be like, oh, don't follow them on social media and all of that. I'm not like that. That that is way too much. That's way too much. Like, girl, grow up, Lisa. Anyway, y'all, we ain't got time for all of that. This was actually a good episode. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about Angie. I think Angie, she would be a cool addition to the show if that's what they trying to get at because, you know, she did kind of come out of nowhere. But um, let me know what y'all thought about this review and the episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.